so we have already gone through about line charts isn't it line charts we are already gone through now let me focus on bar charts okay bar chart guys did you remember why the line chart was recommended the line charts was recommended is recommended if the analysis you are doing over a period of time okay over a period of time if you are doing the analysis that is then line chart is recommended then bar chart is recommended whenever you are doing sort of a comparative analysis okay comparative analysis across the different different categories okay by having different different reporting elements so that is the reason bar chart is recommended okay so keep in mind whenever even end user is also trying to do some you know giving some wrong representation of you know graph sometimes you can educate them hey boss over here you are trying to do the comparative analysis so the recommended chart is bar chart that was you can convey a message to him so that nothing wrong in it because you are trying to educate them okay so nothing wrong in such kind of activities okay now here we go so to do with this bar chart okay so let me open up with my w component here Let's say, let me take, look at this guys. So what is this? Bar chart. Let me try with bar chart. Even within a bar chart, you have different, different type of uh, representations of bar charts guys. Look at this. So let's say, let me take um, subcategory, okay, subcategory, and I'm taking some measure, okay. Let's say that is sales. Look at this. sales okay look at this by default okay a bar chart has been enabled okay now let's say now i would like to okay now i would like to display the values over here and if you want you can swap the this one bar chart column chart see what kind of a chart it is it is a column chart and if you want to swap it this becomes a bar chart so there is a difference so bar chart column chart okay and to achieve this graph okay to achieve this graph what you need you need zero or more dimensions or one or measure that is compulsion okay zero or more dimension or one or more measure that is mandatory elements okay guys now within this uh, bar chart itself we have different different representations of charts also okay for example this is a horizontal okay chart or bar yeah horizontal or vertical or bar chart or column chart whatever you call it as okay similarly look at this we do have stacked bars stacked bars so stacked bars are helpful to deal with uh, representations of a data in a single line itself okay for example now here we go see what is happening here okay now let me add one more measure for this for example let's say let me add quantity okay look at this what happened so different different notations of a data is happening here within the same okay bar okay see different different representations look at this okay accessories okay such kind of a stuff right guys right isn't it now if you want you can deal with the subcategory colors here okay see and subcategory values labels or what not okay see look at this so this is the way okay so what what is happening the whole bar is showing it in a same same the whole information is showing it in a different different uh, you know highlighting of different different colors which is showing in a single bar okay this is what stacked bars okay stacked bars 
to deal with this what what are the prerequisite elements you need one or more dimensions or is one more measure one or more measures now let me add one more dimension let's say mm, region wise okay region wise look at this or else we can do one thing see region wise central east south west look at this okay look at this okay the central west and this is the different different colors and you know how to change these colors and all right we already gone through these guys okay likewise okay so this is what stacked bars what is that stacked bar okay now similarly we do also have a concept called side by side bars side by side bar guys did you remember this side by side bar did you remember this we have already discussed with the concept called blended axis isn't it the same topic that is nothing but side by side bar but the side by side bars will have look at this again one or more dimension one or more measure yes now look at this okay see what happened here now if you want to switch off this switch on this see have this kind of a stop and do you want to stop this yes see side by side okay side by side now look at this instead of sub category you may have it a category either way okay it's purely need basis see okay and do you want to show the value see look at this okay this is what side by side okay side by side bars okay so with these different different combinations like you know horizontal vertical bar okay stacked bars and side by side bar bars you can play around with this guys okay but for this what you need you need to have one or more dimension or one or more measure okay same stuff okay these are all comes up with the requirements basically but you should be in a position to justify that yes what sort of elements that is needed okay okay how we can represent it what are all the representations that you can expose to the customers okay so this is what guys okay likewise and not only that you know you can play around even over here also okay okay line okay likewise bar chart plenty of stuff guys these are all comes up with the practice practice okay now look at this this is also a side by side bar isn't it absolutely yes okay see right quantity and sales look at the values see side by side bars okay so this is the way to deal with this guys okay this is what bar chart so most of the times it is exclusively helpful to do the comparative data to do the comparative analysis okay no yeah and that we are going to touch base is tree map okay tree map or circle we can focus on circle also okay let me check it out here so what is the next one we are focusing guys tree maps what is this tree maps basically these tree maps are exclusively helpful okay these tree maps are exclusively helpful okay to deal with the hierarchical yes hierarchical representation of a data okay yes like parent and child relationships some such kind of a stuff okay like country region like year quarter month week some kind of hierarchical data okay so these three maps are exclusively helpful now here we go so these higher these three maps will represent the data in a hierarchical manner in the form of nested rectangles in the form of what nested rectangles guys okay nested rec rectangles here we go it's quite simple guys okay very simple now go to show me okay what is this look at this you have three map Let me move measure here. Okay, tree map. So basically, this tree map, as I said, it is exclusively recommended to deal with the hierarchical data. Yeah. 
right now here we go yeah let me show you guys no, let me remove this let me create one more chart then Now look at this. Let's say I have mm, content. Okay, I have content. And then region. Let's say yeah. region. And then let's say imagine I have one more measure. Look at this, guys. Okay, tree map. One or more dimension. One or two measures. Look at this. One or more dimensions. One or two measures. Now look at this. So what happened? Isn't it? Automatically, okay, automatically the respective high values whatever you have, okay, with respect to the West region and technology, it is, high, it is highlighting it in a, with a thick green and look at the portion, how it has been occupied. Okay, like that. Now look at this. Technology, West region, these are all the sales. Now furniture, West region, Okay, this is the sales like that. So whatever you have very minute portion, the small portion which is nothing but which is having less sales, that is what the intention. Okay. Likewise, in this way also you can represent with sort of okay, with sort of colors. And the same even you can deal with this. Let me do a sizing or you can yeah, sizing, right? Yeah, let me do a sizing. So no not on read. Sorry. I think it is I would like to do a sales on wait a second there. Sales on okay. Size. What went wrong here? The dimensions, the dimensions are missing. So let me do one thing. Okay, so let me put in this one. I have a category and I have region, two or more cell, two or more measures. Fine. Okay, now look at this. So this three map. Okay. Now look at this. Okay. Now if you want, you can play around with the sizing all those things now look at this size has been already created automatically size and colors okay size and colors has been automatically created okay now do you want to change the colors yes you can okay but by default the colors has been taken care by the tool itself okay and the respective sizing also okay look at this okay the respective sizing and the okay colors has been taken care on top of the okay now, do you want to represent the labels? Look at this. Labels also you can represent in this way. So this is the way to deal with the uh, tree map. Okay, to deal with the tree map. So for the tree map, what are the prerequisites you should have? One or two more measures, and one or more. Okay. So this kind of principles you are not supposed to forget. Okay. Principles in the sense, see, basically by default it is treating the colors and sizing automatically the moment you are keeping it as a you know the moment you are keeping it as a, the tree map automatically the sizing and all everything is reflecting in picture automatically so don't forget that okay so those parameters you should keep in your mind right guys so this is what about tree map okay tree map right And what is another one? Let's say, let's talk about what is this circle view, or we can also call it as um, what I can say, circle charts. Sometimes we used to call it as circle charts also. But the best recommended terminology is circle views. Okay, here we go. What is the purpose? It, again, it is just like your bar charts, where it is helpful to do the comparative analysis again. But the representation not in the bars, but the representation lies lies with 
some circles. Okay, now look at this. For example, um, let's say I have category. Look at this. One or more dimension, one or more measure. Okay. Simple, quite simple it is. Okay. Now look at this. Say this. Okay. Now look at this circles. Okay, look at this. Now right. Now look at this. Okay. Automatically it is turning into a shape. Okay. Do you want to convert it into bar? Yes, you can, in fact. Okay. But since we are going at with the you know circle, this is the way. Okay. Now okay, look at this. Based upon the values, it is being considered. Now, can we use multiple measures? Yes. Because you have what? Here, if you observe clearly, side by side circle. Okay. Yes, even you do have. Just look at this in this way. Now, do you want me to define something like a date or something else? See, like this. Okay. Right, guys. So this is the way. Right. Now, do you want me to expand this? Yes, absolutely. Now, do you want me to refer to the values? Here we go. Okay. This is the way, guys. Okay. To deal with the circle views. Similarly, you do have side by side circles also. What is that? Side by side circles also, you do have it. But for that, what you need? One or more dimension, one or more measures. Okay. Now, look at this. For example, see. Okay. Now, look at this. Okay. What is happening respective to the categories? Okay, the measures of keep on varying here. Okay, see side by side, side by side, circle views. Okay, so this is also we can okay we can helpful for the uh, what is that comparative data, comparative analysis. This is also recommended. Okay, depends purely depends upon the need basis, guys. Okay, yeah, All right. Purely depends upon the need basis. Just all what it is, it just needs to play around with these guys. Not, that's it. That's it. Nothing else. Okay. Just you need to play around with that. Okay. Yeah. Right. So this is what circle views or circle charts. Right. Yes. The next one is what? Pie chart. What is it, guys? Pie chart. You know, right? How pie, ch pie charts are exclusively helpful to deal with the summarized data. I think you are aware of it, right? To deal with the summarized data. Isn't it? Pie charts are helpful to deal with the summarized data. Okay. Where you can, okay represents the data in the form of different different portions like percentages okay such kind of a stuff now here we go pie charts okay now for example let me take hmm, whatever Okay, and respective sales. Okay, look at this. Four different regions. At least you have it. No, so automatically. Look at the pie chart. One or more dimensions. One or two measures. Either way. Yeah. Okay. One or more dimension. One or two measures. Now look at this. Okay. See. Okay. But you know what, guys? Look at this. Here I'm taking segment. Fine. Okay. Segment. Look at this. Automatically the pie chart is coming in picture. That's fine. Segment and then a measure. So sales. Okay. Look at the sales. Is this a pie chart, guys? No. You have to turn it into a pie chart. Look at this. Keep the values. Okay? Likewise. 
Okay, now. Or here, at this moment, how many portions I have? Only three portions, isn't it? You know, the W is recommending we are, these portions not supposed to exceed, okay, these supports not supposed to exceed more than 12, okay, which doesn't look good. Look at this. What happened? Look at this. What happened, guys? Does it make sense? You have so many portions here. Okay. Does it look good? No. It accepts, but the best practice is what? We should have a limited portions. So, which is not supposed to exceed more than, okay, which is not supposed to exceed more than what? 12. Okay. Right, guys. Okay. Now, can we? Does it accept multiple? Uh, you know, uh, pie charts? Yes, absolutely, it accepts. Okay. No, sorry. So you can have, you can represent it in multiple ways also. That is also possible, guys. Okay, that is one thing. So keep in mind. But here the thumb rule is always we better to follow. Okay, always we better to follow multiple. I mean, uh, which is not supposed to exceed more than. Okay, which is not supposed to exceed more than. Okay, twelve portions. That is a mandatory, I mean mandatory rule in the sense that is the best practice guys, most of the time. That is the best practice that we used to follow. Okay? So don't forget that. Okay. Even if someone is proposing to have 15 to 20, something like that, you can say that, yes boss, whatever you are saying is possible. I agree. But it should make sense out of it. Okay. Basically, pie chart itself will have a summarized data and on top of it if you try to provide some clumsy data it leads to a confusion isn't it so that is the reason okay that is the reason always we should okay always we should we should give some sort of a meaningful data to the pie chart guys so don't forget that okay which is definitely a sensitive information okay now yeah then another one which i am talking is text tables or we can also call it as list reports. Okay, test table or list report. So it is basically to recommend to represent the detailed level of a data. Okay, it is helpful to represent detailed level of a data. Okay, to represent what detailed level of a data, guys. Now here we go. Where you can call it as. You have what text tables here. So what are what you can do? You know, simple. For example, let's say mm, I have some okay segment. Okay, fine. Some measures. Look at this. For example, I have sales. Okay. Now, what are you trying to do? You know, sales and quantity. For example. But I don't want these graphs and all, right? I need what? Look at this text table. The first one. It requires one or more dimensions, one or more measures. But how I can, okay, how I can represent this text table? So from that, what you need to do is look at this. Select that particular measure, turn into discrete, okay. And again, select that measure, turn into discrete. Now look at this, okay. Right, guys, you have what? Text table, okay, where you can have a detailed information, something like this, okay. Got me? Yes. Okay. Yeah. This is the way. 
right is to call it as text table similarly for example the value likewise okay so this is exclusively for the detailed level of a data just like your vertical table some vertical tab i can say okay likewise this is the text table but for this what is the combination you require that is one or more dimension or one or more measures that is what you need guys okay so text table also okay now with the help of this can we achieve cross table okay can we achieve cross table guys have you ever heard about cross table in a traditional tools you have a concept called okay cross table so cross table is nothing but collection of rows and columns and body okay collection of rows and columns and body okay and in a body level we used to define what measures okay now here we go let me show you that mm. okay cross table okay so you know what guys why cross table is recommended see text table is recommended to have a to represent the detail level of a data okay but cross table it is recommended to represent intersectional data it is represent to what to represent intersectional data okay now cross tab is what it is a collection of rows and columns and body in the rows and columns level we used to define dimensions so don't forget that and in a body level we used to define measures the same logic even it is applicable with the traditional reporting tools also okay even the same it is carry forward with the tableau functionality also okay so that is the reason right so this is what in a dimension level we used to place i mean dimensions we used to place at a rows and columns level and in a body level we used to place measures okay so let me show you right away how we can de define this okay cross tab okay something like this yeah so let's say i have uh, let's say i have some order date okay and then let's say i have some segment look at this okay rows and columns what is this dimension don't you agree with me guys yes now what is this this abc and all this is what body we used to call it as measures okay now look at this okay see cross tab okay rows and columns we are defining dimensions but in a body level we are defining measure now let me remove this segment let me add one more object let's say this okay okay column wise i have dates row wise i have sub category and in a body level i have sales this is the way this is the way to deal with the cross tab functionality All right guys okay so not only a text table you can also achieve with uh, cross tab functionality as well okay right now you can ask me a question can we have multiple uh, dimensions what happened nothing wrong okay yes it gives you again you see this cross tab functionality only but over here you have multiple dimensions that's it but can we add measures yeah definitely why not okay by default the property might change but you have to convert into again a text and then you have to or else that particular measure you should convert into a discrete okay instead of continuous you have to keep it as discrete so this is the way okay so likewise we can deal with the okay we can deal with the text table as well as cross tables that is the functionality guys okay is, yes please uh suppose if we want to uh, make a totals uh, we need to create a parameter suppose exactly. row by Total exactly. total. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Or else you can do one thing. You don't need to go ahead with the parameter itself. Now look at this. You have this corresponding measures, right? Okay. What is this? 
uh, like this. Okay, you can use this functionalities. Either ways, you can see two things you can do. Either you can create a calculate field, or you can achieve this functionality, or else with the help of this one only you can go ahead with that. Okay, either ways, that is your comfort. Okay, but no one will ask you, hey, why you have created a variable something like this, uh, Prasar? Okay, but always we have to give a best shot with a better approach, with a better methodology. We have to give a best shot because this is a tool. So you can tune it as per your need basis. It's absolutely you are fine. But if it is a something like in a scripting, right? You have to follow the process. First, you have to give the bracelet and then comma something like that. But here it is not like that. We can play around with this. You can anyways. You can opt to that particular feature. Right, Prasad? Yeah. Thank you, Zarei. No problem, sir. Yeah. Now let me touch base with a concept called. Again, we have uh, the another one is. Um, heat map. What is this? Heat map. Okay. So basically, these heat maps, okay, are exclusively helpful to deal with the, to represent the data in the form of inbuilt sizing and I mean default sizing and colors. Okay. Sizing and colors. Now look at this. Okay, heat map. Now look at this. Where is the heat map? Look at here. Heat map. What does it require? One or more dimension, one or two measures. Okay. Now look at this. For example, let's say let me take uh, category. Okay. And then sales, for example. Okay. Now look at this. This is what? Heat map. Okay. Inbuilt sizing and inbuilt default colors. Okay. Inbuilt sizing and then inbuilt colors. So this is the way. You can also represent the data in this way also. That is also possible. Either way. Okay. Now, does it accept multiple measures? Why not? Okay. So we can use this kind of a representation of a data also. Okay. Likewise, but most of the times it is just to represent the data with the height, with the you know, default sizing and colors. We used to define this um, heat maps. Okay, heat maps. Right. Yeah. The another one that I am going to discuss is um, highlight tables. Okay. Yeah, highlight tables. So basically, these highlight tables are exclusively helpful to highlight the background. Of the report, okay. So helpful to highlight the background of the report, okay. Or else I can say that it is used to highlight the background data. It is used to highlight what background data. Now here we go, highlight tables. Yeah, okay. Now. Let me take a um, yeah, subcategory and example. Okay, some of sales. Now look at this. What is this? For highlight tables, what is the prerequisite? One or more dimension, one measure. Now let me select this. See, it is being highlighted automatically, isn't it? Whatever the highest value you have, look at this. This 25 and this 27. It is the background. Okay. But the lowest value, like 920, 213, look at this. It is shaded, uh, you know, color. So this is what. So based upon the value, automatically the color, and then again the sizing is happening. But it is just highlighting with a different, different representations of a highlighting of colors with very thick, very light, something like that. Okay. So this is what we used to call it as highlight tables. Now, can we use multiple dimensions? What is the rule here? One or more dimension. Okay, one or more dimension. But rule is what? Only one measure. So one or more dimension. Let's say let me have. Yeah. See, look at this. Okay. Again, yes, absolutely. But the rule is only one measure. Okay. Yes. This is what highlight. Okay. This is what 
highlight uh, table, highlight table or highlight chart, whatever you call it as. Okay, so this is the way. Look at this. In this, in, in this specific, specifically this accessories in this years, what is the highest value? Look at this, four eight zero six. That is the reason it is giving in a thick. Okay. Now, do you want to edit the colors? Yes, absolutely. You can, as per your need basis, fully. See. Okay. You can play around with these colors and all. Okay. Yeah, guys. It's up to you. Okay. Look at the steps. What type of steps that you need to consider for every five steps? Okay, all those things. Do you want to have it in a reverse way? Yes, all those things. Practice, practice. Comes up with the practice. Okay, yeah, look at this. Okay, so this is what about highlight tables. Okay, highlight tables. Now, the next important one I'm going to touch base is. Uh, again, another different type of a charting functionality that is what? Scatter plot. Okay, scatter plot. We used to call it as plot. Okay, here we go. Okay, plot. Right, guys. Where do you see this? Scatter plot. Look at this. Look at this, guys. Two or more dimensions. And two to four measures. Okay. It is helpful. Okay. It is helpful to do the analysis with the two to four measures, with multiple measures, I can say. But especially in between two to measures, do you want to do any comparison? Then scatter plot is recommended. Okay. This is what, guys, you should know these principles. Okay, that is the reason I'm saying. Okay, because all of a sudden, if someone is asking you, hey, whether it is fixed, whether it is achievable, yes, boss, it accepts only two measures, but not more than that. So you should be in a position to justify that. Okay, yeah. Now look at this. So let me touch base with the report development. What it requires? Two to four measures, guys. What is that? Two to four measures. Here we go. Give me a second, guys. Sorry, give me a second, guys. Sorry. <clears throat> yeah. I'm sorry, guys. I'm back. Sorry. Okay, let's say, as I said, right, this quarter plat is for what? Scatter plat is to deal with the two to four measures, exclusively to deal with the two to four measures. Now look at this. For example, I have in rows as well as in columns, you will have measures only, okay? And then I have profits, okay? What happened? Look at this. Few of the options has been disabled. Look at this. Now this quarter plat has been highlighted here. Do you agree with me? Look at this. Scatter plat. Look at the values. See. This is what? Okay. All right, guys. So. This is what, but whenever we have a combo of multiple measures, especially in between two to four, then this quarter plot is recommended. Okay, now can't we use dimension here? You can, but that is how it is helpful. Now, here we go. Look at this. So, now subcategory with colors. Look at this. See, so this value is something from inherited. Right? Now, look at this. What I'll do, I'll take it. Category. Now look at this. Category with colors. See. What happened? Right, guys. Again, the scatter plot is with the combo of multiple measures with the highlighting of a data with respect to the dimension. That is possible. But over here, columns and rows level, you are not supposed to use uh, dimension where it should have only a measure. Okay. 
so that is the rule look at the rule here zero or more dimensions okay zero or more dimensions two to four measures likewise okay so that is what guys this is what scatter plot but here See, by looking at these values, sometimes it gives you some sort of a confusion, right? Now, select this particular, now look at this, it gives you the values like furniture, profit and sales, see multiple measures, okay? Office supplies, profit and sales, okay? Now, select, right click. We have a concept called drop lines, okay? We have a concept called drop lines. Now, show the drop lines. Look at this, whenever I select my, the respective value here, it gives you the drop lines like this. Look at this. Okay. That's how it works. Now look at this. Now, do you want to edit these drop lines? Now look at this. Go to drop lines. Edit drop lines. Now it should always, I should have always the drop line should be highlighted both on X axis and Y axis. So this is the way. Okay. Look at this. See. Right guys. So, a plot chart with drop lines. Yes, that is also possible. Okay, now let me take instead of uh, category, right? Now let me take subcategory so that you will see the difference. Okay, now look at this. There's so many values here. So that is the reason. Now again, if you don't want to remove, um, if you want to remove this, again come down here, drop lines, edit drop lines, make it as only when selected. Only when selected in the sense, the moment I select this particular one, see. Okay, this one is going to be enabled like this, the drop lines like this. The moment whenever I'm going to select it, it is going to highlight it. Away. This is what the moment I select it, but okay, the moment I select it, but again, this drop lines should be okay, automatically always should be always. Okay, then if that is the case, so always we have this one. Okay, this is what scatter plot, guys. Scatter plot. Okay. Right here. Uh, Aman, can you give me a second? Now here, Aman, please give me a second. Now here, you can use a combo like, you know, a different measure like, you know, sales profit discount. Look at this. You can place over here. See, again, multiple measure. Okay. I mean, two axes. One is over here, the profit and over here, discount. Okay. Look at the scale. Again, synchronize axis. Likewise. You can play around with this in this way also with the potter, uh, scatter plot itself. Okay, this is also feasible. Technically, it is also feasible. Okay, a yes, summon, please summon. Yeah, please. Yeah, uh, Ganesh, here so uh, the what are the variables are there, right? Dimensions and measures. So Tableau mm -hmm. has uh, any intelligence uh, uh, like you know by default uh, the all dimensions uh, will be like uh, uh, discrete. And measures will be continuous. If that statement is correct, uh, by default, uh, I agreed because look at this. If you look at here, by default, it is taking it as continuous. Okay, yes, agreed. So because based upon the nature of a data only, it has been considered. I mean, the tableau is having intelligence to identify whether it is geographic dimension, or is whether it is text dimension, or whether it is you know measure. So that is the reason. Yes, it is having that intelligence to identify it by default with a continuous for measures and dimensions with a discrete. Yes, agreed. That statement is correct, Aman. Okay, so uh, one more question, Ganesh. Yeah. So here I had, uh, you know, somewhere I read that uh, there is a motion chart there. Motion chart? Yeah. Once you click on the, whatever the graph will flow, something like this. So if it is down, mm -hmm. if it is up, if it, so something like that. Motion chart, somewhere I read. So could you please uh, throw some points or if you have any idea uh, regarding that, it would okay. be good. Uh, yeah. May I know where you have, I mean, in which context you have gone through that motion ch motion charting? Uh, see, uh, 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 we have, I you know, uh, one measure and uh, one uh, dimension. It's okay. a uh, category wise. So once mm -hmm. if you click on that uh, motion chart, so if the values are like increasing, so it will move something like this. Now, once if you click, it will move something like that. Okay. So somewhere yeah, I, I agree with you, Raman. Okay, so let me put in this way. So let me touch base this topic in a tomorrow session, especially the motion chart 
can you do me a favor? Can you please just send me a text mail saying that need some details on motion map? Okay, can you just send me a text mail so that I'll, I'll have it in my mind? Okay, and I'll try to identify some scenarios and then I can try. I will try to expose uh, explore you in a tomorrow's session. Is that okay with you? Yeah, fine, Manish. Thanks. Yeah. Yes, but you need to send me a text mail. Okay, please. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm wrong, man. Yeah. Okay, guys. So this is what scatter plotting functionality. Okay. The next one, what I'm going to focus is, uh, like, uh, we have what? We have this, uh, what is that? Bullet graph. Okay. So this bullet graph is exclusively helpful to deal with the actual versus targets, guys. Actual values as well as the targeted values. Okay. I mean, whenever you are in your dealing representations of actual versus targets, then this bullet graph is recommended. Okay. Here we go, guys. bullet graphs okay now let's say for example I am considering the data of segments okay segment wise and some measure okay okay now look at this guys this curve plot or you can call it as bullet pro, uh, bullet whatever it is okay so sorry this one bullet graph okay zero or more dimensions two measures Fine. Now look at this. What happened? Two measures, right? Two measures. Now, let's say I'll have it with some of us. Okay. The facility is disabled. So, let me take. Okay. Now look at this guy. Bullet graph. Okay. What happened? Did you observe this? This graph has been considered. Okay. Instead of segments, I'll take. Yeah. Okay, guys, now look at this. So, based upon this, right, bullet, what is the average sale? 1 to 716. Okay. So, it is giving the comparative values. Let's say, imagine that you have some, might have, you might have some benchmark. Benchmark in the sense, let's say, my targeted value, for example, let's say, 25,000 is the average sale. That is the target. But, does it meeting with the target? So, to do this kind of a comparative analysis, look at this. Okay, we'll be using this kind of a bullet graph. Okay, this bullet graphs require two or more dimension. Okay, sorry, zero or more dimensions, but the combo of two measures is compulsion. Okay, in this way. Now look at this. Look at the graph here. It is having its their own benchmarks. Okay, where it is showing you multiple measures. Look at this. Profit is 405, sales is 886, something like that. Okay. Likewise. Okay, it is doing the comparison between, okay, profit and sales. Right. Look at this. Machines. The profit was unexpected and it is below the expected 0k values likewise. So this is also helpful to deal with the comparative analysis, oh, sorry, not comparative. What is that? Actual versus budget, something like this. Okay, current value unto the expected value, actual value unto the target value, some kind of a stuff. We will be using this um, bullet charts, guys. Okay. Yeah. The another one is double chart. Okay. Or Bubble chart is quite simple. Let's talk about Gantt view. Okay, where is that Gantt view? Okay, look at this guys, Gantt view. Okay, so this Gantt view is basically helpful. I mean, it, it needs a combo of okay, it needs a combo of one date. Okay, one date. And one or more dimension, okay? One or more dimension, and and zero to two measures. That is the combination it requires, okay? That is what gone to you, okay? Now look at this. For example, um, I have a data like, okay? Let me put it this way. <coughs> Gantt view or Gantt chart, whatever it is. Okay, let's say I have year. Mm, what is that? Year wise combination. And I mean, say date. Okay, I have order date. Fine. Now look at this. The moment I am expanding, okay, it is giving these results. Okay. Let's say 
I would have uh, the exact date. What is happening? By default, it is treating as okay. Of course, exact date. Okay, guys. What is happening here? Okay. Now I have a Gantt view by default, but it requires what? The dimension as well. Okay. Or else you can do one thing instead of discrete, right? I can do one thing. Continuous. Look at this. Okay. Discrete. Discrete and then continuous. The moment I'm turning into continuous, okay, it is giving this way. Now, let's say in a row level, let me take the dimension. What is happening? It is what a Gantt view, guys. Okay. Okay. Right? So where it is helpful okay, to track a specific event over a periodical time. Okay. To track an event over a period of time. Now look at this. Over a period of time in the sense, look at this. You are dealing with a specific order date. Okay. What is that category? This is the element. Okay. And just I would like to track this over a period of time. Look at this. Wherever you see the thick thickness, okay. So where it is giving a good values. So something like that. Okay. Now let me have you can have one more dimension also. That is also fine. Look at this. Okay. This is the way. Or it's let me put in this way. Mm. Yeah. See. Okay. You can represent with values. Okay. Like this. Like this. This is what? Gantt view. Okay. Now, the another one what we have is packet bubbles. Okay, packet bubbles. So it is the combination. See, bubbles is represented again to represent what is the volume of a data, to represent the volume of a data. That is what? Packed bubbles. Okay. Okay. You know what, guys? This is used to represent what? To represent the volumes of data. Okay. Yeah, that is the reason. Okay. I mean, it's quite simple, guys. Okay. Now look at this. Mm, for example, what it requests two or more measures. So let's say I have a measure of, uh, you know, this one and this one, I need some subcategory. Okay, now look at this. You have what? Patch bubbles. You can use this. See, based upon the you know um, the portion what it is being occupied. Okay, it has been highlighted. Okay, now you can if you want you can edit this. Okay, whatever. Okay, likewise. Right, guys. So this is the way. So it is, see, based upon the ratio, the percent, the volume wise, the volume of record, it is being in this way. So this is what? Packed bubbles. Now can we have multiple uh, dimensions on top of it? it? It leads to a clumsiness. So that is the reason we used to define a limited volume of a data with the kind of this uh, uh, packed bubbles with a limited volume of a data. But out of that limited volume, what is the high portion? I mean, what is the high Cat, uh, high specific category is being occupied. What is the portion? Likewise. So to deal with this, we used to define this. Um, right, guys. With the bubble. Okay. Back to bubbles. Right, guys. So this is what about the charts. As And Aman, I'll get back to you in tomorrow's session regarding the motion chart. Okay. Let me, let me try to figure out some scenarios and I'll get back to you with that. Okay, that is one thing. Okay. okay, and yes, guys, what else? Do you have any other questions, guys? Ganesh Harish here. Yes, Harish, please. Hi, Ganesh. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, I have a doubt on tree, tree uh, map, I mean, tree chart. Uh, okay. It's like hierarchical view of, uh, you can uh, represent the hierarchical. Uh, yeah. 
yeah uh, can we go with uh, uh, what you call time dimension uh, hierarchical view or else uh, country state region uh, okay. can you show us uh, in uh, in a hierarchical way so that we can no problem okay Now let's say I have other bit, okay, and I have okay multiple measures. Let's say multiple measures, three match. Now here, based upon what you would like to decide this category, I mean, based upon what here you are dealing with year to date, right? Now look at this. Do you want to expand with quarter? Look at this. Do you want to expand with month? Do you want to expand with it? Likewise. You got me? Yeah. 2004, Q3, September 10, 2014, Q3, specific, okay? Category, likewise. And if you don't want this day level, just remove this day. Now, month. Now, do you want don't want month? Then remove it. You have it only quarter-wise, like that. Is that what you are looking, uh, Harish? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, Ganesh. Uh, only uh, this is will be a rectangle uh, represent yes. or yes. the uh, nature can of go with the... it is a rectangle representation, Harish. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Does that answer your question, Harish? Yes, yes. I mean hierarchical view of uh, this exactly. uh, graph. But I it want accepts to know only the rectangles way only. It doesn't accept any other shapes. Okay. Because this is the nature of this graph. That is the reason. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Ganesh. Yeah. No problem, sir. Okay guys, thank you guys. Thanks for your time.